country, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And today we remember all of his achievements in breaking down segregation and bigotry and standing up for the oppressed peoples of our country and the world. And while we celebrate his life, it is terribly important, it seems to me, that we just don't look at him as a museum figure, as somebody from the past. What is important is that we remember his vision, the world that he wanted to see, the America that he wanted to see. And let us remember where Dr. King was when he was assassinated. He was standing with sanitation workers, oppressed workers, low-paid workers. And he said, the lowest workers in America, the lowest paid people in America deserve dignity. I will stand with them. And remember the project that he was working on when he was assassinated. What he was talking about is a poor people's campaign. And what he said is in this country with so much wealth, why is there so much poverty? And what he said then and what we say today, we cannot be a divided nation black and white and Latino and Asian American Af and all of us have got to stand together to fight for dignity for all. I need one of them signed now. And today we talk about education no and we talk time. about our children and we ask why in the wealthiest nation in the history of the world, why do we have the highest rate of childhood poverty of any major country. Why are there millions of families in this country struggling to feed their children? Why do we have a proliferation of millionaires and billionaires and moms and children living out on the streets? And when we think about Dr. King's vision, what Dr. King said is, we have got to combat racism, but we have also got to combat income and wealth inequality. And I wonder if Dr. King was with us today, what would he say about a nation in which the top one-tenth of one percent own more wealth than the bottom 90 percent? And what would he say about a nation in which 29 million Americans had no health insurance and in a state where the governor refused to allow the people of this state to take advantage of Medicaid expansion? And what would he say in a society in which so many of our bright young people are unable to afford to get a college education. I think he would agree with many of us and say that every public college and university in America should be tuition free. And I think if he were here today and he saw that moms and dads who went to work could not find decent, affordable childcare he would say that child care is a right for all people, for all of our little children. And I think if he were here today and he saw a two-tiered public education system where people of color were not getting the funding and not having the buildings and the schools and the technology their kids needed, he would say, that's wrong, that has got to change. Yeah. So the point is, let us not look at Dr. King as just an historical figure. Let us look at a man who tried to transform 
this country who stood for the weakest, for the most humble, who said that we must have an America that belongs to all of us. That is the vision that he gave us. That is the struggle that he asked us to undertake. That is why we are here today. And that's why we will continue that fight. Thank you all very much. We will now hear from the Honorable Martin O'Malley, U.S. Presidential Candidate from Baltimore.